good lord, where to start with this one? It's something that, as soon as I saw it, I knew that I wanted to do. I've been a fan of Lord of the Rings on and off since the Peter Jackson movies in the early 2000s. I was in my early 20s when they came out. And obviously, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of Star Wars. So, I was sitting back. I was just kind of surfing Patreon, looking through some of the stuff uh, from Mystery Makers for when I was doing the Obi-Wan saber. And I came across his Narsil build. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, yep, I have to do that saber. And as I was going through it, I was looking at it and I'm like, his design really would look great if it was painted up in Bamboo Studio. Because there's so many little things that I can do in that that I really can't do by hand. Like, yeah, I could probably make the elven script on the hilt gold by hand but uh, there's a good chance i'm gonna mess it up so i painted it all up in bamboo studio and went into detail painted gold on the hilt painted gold on the cross guards spent ages painting this thing up and then sent it to print well i, I believe in being honest here you're seeing right now this is the cross guards that are printing um, the cross guards did not show any gold at all in the lettering on a 0.4 nozzle. I probably could have gone with a 0.2 nozzle and actually got gold to show. But these cross guards, they already took the best part of, I want to say, maybe 19 hours for two of them. And then as you see, one of them failed anyway. So I had to skip it and then reprint that one anyway. So in the end, I got the gold on the hilt, which still looks magnificent. It still looks like it, it's kind of glowing, like it does when they read it in the movies. And that was just what I wanted. I mean, in the end, this is a piece that's going to sit on my wall for decoration. And I just wanted to have something that would look good from afar didn't have to be ultra detailed although i'm not gonna lie i would have absolutely loved for it to have had the gold on the cross guards as well overall in printing this was a piece that took days and i mean each piece was 18 19 hours each the hilt itself was about 27 hours because of so many color swaps and in the end, I wound up having five or six failures that I had to reprint anyway. So this was a very, very long process, probably about five days overall from start to finish to print everything. As we move on to the assembly, I'd already picked up an RGB core that I was intending to use for this or a couple of other projects. It was a cheap one from AliExpress that was $45 for a core and a blade. It's a really simple seven sound unit, which just gets the job done. So as you see here, I'm just showing off the scripting and a couple of other things that I changed from Marco's original design, which included sinking in some screw threads to help keep the hilt and blade holder in place once everything was put together. All in all, Marco made this piece really, really sturdy just by making everything secure with screws and nuts so in the hilt there's literally two screws that have two nuts inside it so you can see here i'm just tightening those up that holds it in place you can swing this thing around it's not going to come apart in your hands it's sturdy with the screws in there it's pretty solid now as you can see the next part i actually threaded a couple of screws in the broken blade the broken blade is like a blade plug that is just a little more deluxe in this case. It's something that Marco provided with his files, that if you've got transparent filament or a resin printer that can print that big, you could theoretically print it out of clear resin. I opted to use transparent filament, but a smoked version, so it gives it kind of a dark gray, blacky look when it's not lit up and then as you'll see later on once we put the core and everything in place it lights up quite nicely at the base and gives it a kind of etheral look that's uh, pretty cool now next we're going to go about mounting the blade holder 
In this case, I opted to add a couple of heat press threaded holders to the hilt just to give it an extra bit of bite because the original just relied on the screws threading into the plastic and I kind of got worried that if I wanted to swing this thing around I was just going to have the entire top come off so I would recommend maybe using some threaded heat press screw holders and just press those into it as well makes it nice and easy makes it nice and solid it's not going to come off as you can see I'm kind of knocking it being happy with it now again I drilled holes in the blade specifically to allow me to thread screws in. The default file doesn't have the screw holes punched in it, but I just used a simple modeling drill and I just drilled in two small holes that allow me to thread the screws in. So if I want to swing the blade around with a broken blade in as well, I can do, you know, why not? Now Marco also includes the blade retention plug, as you can see here, that fits on the blade and then it's got two holes in it for adding threaded nuts and then you can just insert the blade in, screw it down and you've got your lightsaber ready. Overall, I couldn't have asked for more from this piece. It's a huge saber, as you can see in my hand. It's a beautiful finish to it and the broken blade blade plug also just looks amazing on the wall or even if you just want to use it as a prop you know it's just got a great glow to it when it's turned on with the light passing through it let me know in the comments if there's any other saber builds that you would like to see me do i've got a few more coming up in the pipeline but i'd love to know if there's anything that people want to see you can click the playlist above if you want to see more of my saber builds but thank you for watching and until next time may the force be with you